what, what do you think are like misconceptions about page speed and especially is page speed in ranking? Well, I, a lot of people think that it's a big ranking factor. In fact, I was literally looking at uh, a document that a company had produced. This document actually talked about SEO and it had a section on SEO, which is good. Mm -hmm. At least they're thinking about mm -hmm. it. But the first thing they listed was page speed and they were actually quite insistent in the write-up that it was the most important ranking factor. Oh, no. And, and I was like, okay, um, I've got to find the right way to tell them that I want them to deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's really important. It clearly in, in impacts user engagement and conversion. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean you're going to move up three spots right. in the results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to another episode of SEO Mythbusting. With me today is Eric Enger. And um, would you like to introduce yourself because you're doing so much stuff? What sure. is it that you're doing? Uh, well, you know, I'm a general manager of uh, part of the uh, digital marketing team at Proficient Digital. Mm. And all together we do, let's see, SEO, content creation, content marketing, uh, pay per click, uh, analytics, conversion rate optimization, trainings, yeah, Twitter, training. conference yeah. speaking. Yeah, that's uh, a fair amount of stuff to keep us busy. A fair amount of stuff to keep us busy. But today we're going to get busy talking about page speed. It's a great topic because so many people get it wrong. Oh, yeah. It's a quite a deep topic as well. Yes. So, what kind of questions do you have around ranking factors, page speed, and page speed in general? So let's actually start in general mm -hmm. and just talk about why page speed is important. How's that sound? Ah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, I think if you look at what you're trying to accomplish is you're trying to accomplish that you're building a good website for your users, right? Right. So now, how many times have you been on the metro or in a car or somewhere in the like, countryside where you didn't have fantastic reception on your mobile phone? And you were basically just like really quickly trying to find something out, and it just took ages for the content to actually show up. That's painful, isn't it? It is painful, and in fact, on some sites that can happen when you are in a place where you have a perfectly strong signal. <laughs> that's so, actually true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's not that's so frustrating. Right, and you don't want to frustrate your users. Right, and we as a search engine. Uh, do not want to have users frustrated when they like see content. So for us, it makes sense to consider fast websites a little more helpful to the users than very slow websites, right? Uh, it, it does make sense. And I, I guess my thought process in this has always been that, um, well, yes, it's likely that you're using at some level as a ranking factor. Mm -hmm. But you can't make it such a strong ranking factor that you won't show the most relevant content. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, right? the, yeah, if you have bad content, if you're the fastest website out there, but the content is not great, then that's not helping you. Ever. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, to get the content you don't want quickly mm -hmm. is probably not what the user is looking <laughs> for. <laughs> exactly. Like, I have a blank website. It's the fastest website ever. Yeah, uh, yeah that's well, the point. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but it does make sense to consider it at least at some level. And there's actually a fun pair of statistics. I think they're both from Google. Uh, one is that uh, something like 53% of sessions are abandoned uh, if it takes longer than three seconds for mm -hmm. the page to load. And then the companion awesome. statistic is, um, and I think it's a little bit old, but still, the average page takes 15.3 seconds to oh, oh, yeah. What a frightening it's, combination. It is frightening. It's frightening. <laughs> and it, it's so many different factors, right? Sometimes it's slow servers, but sometimes it's just like the server responds really quickly, but then there's a ton of JavaScript that has to be processed first. And JavaScript is a very expensive resource because it has to be like fully downloaded and then parsed and then executed. Right. Um, but yeah, so we, we keep seeing this and everyone knows this and anecdotal evidence is there as well. Like you have studies, you have the anecdotal evidence of you sitting in front of a website going like, ah. And it, just imagine being on a metered connection where you actually pay by megabyte when you fly or right. something. It's like, you can buy 20 megabytes for 10 euros or something. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, open one website. You said, what was it, 15 megabyte is the, is the uh, average or something? Right? Uh, well, it's 15.3 seconds. 15, if uh, sorry, 15.3 seconds. But yes. But yeah, so like, you can just imagine like, how much data you were pulling in these 15 seconds. Yeah, in fact, uh, 
I did see, uh, I really was looking at this just yesterday. There is this data from Think with Google mm. uh, where various, by market sector, it shows the average web page size. And they're all oh, yeah. in the megabytes in oh, every yeah, yeah, market. Yeah. And I think your recommendation is 500 kbytes or less. Yeah, if the, I'm the not fewer mistaken. the better. The fewer the better, really. You, of course. Right. 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 Uh, and just think about it. Like, I grew up with entire video games on like two or three floppy disks, which each fit like a megabyte and, and a half or something. So, uh, yeah. why are we doing this on the web now? Hmm, what a, what, a, what a great idea. Well, maybe we should help people speed their sites up. What do you think? That's the thing, and that's why ranking these uh, by speed is also an important factor, but as you say, like, content still is king. Like, there's no question about that. Right, absolutely. How do you think people are thinking about page speed as a ranking factor? As like, what are they, what are they trying to do when, when they are trying to optimize for it? So, well, in terms of what they try to do, uh, I think, uh, there's a few things that people are really good at thinking mm. about related to page speed. So I think almost everybody recognizes that images are a potential issue. Yeah. Uh, and you know certainly um, pre-sizing the image rather than mm -hmm. making the browser do it, for example, and, and things like that. And, um, and, and so they get to that first level of optimization. Right. But I think there's other things that they find a lot more difficult. Uh, so, for example, the idea of not loading the content below the fold until the content above the fold right. is present. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that's a little harder for, to implement. Uh, in we have la native lazy loading for images now, so that's something at least. Yes, it is something. Um, and then I think uh, another thing that they have trouble with is, and you actually mentioned it a moment ago, um, the idea that the, the way you're hosted and the way you're... Uh, uh, CDN is set up can mm. be big factors if those aren't actually set mm -hmm. up properly. First of all, they might not have a CDN. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they may have it and it may not be properly configured, configured. as well. No caching and stuff, we've seen all of this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and, and then it could be as simple as I need more memory in my web server or <laughs> Or you know, uh, a dedicated server when I'm on a shared mm. server connection. All of that yeah. sounds pretty solid, but yeah. is there any misconceptions or myths that are going around where you're like, oh, is, what's happening here? Where's this coming from? Is that true? Uh, so I do think uh, maybe I could state the myth almost as an inverse: is they're they're too focused on just mm -hmm. a few surface level factors. Oh yeah. Uh, and they don't realize there's other layers to there's this There's layers to this, yes. Yeah. Although there's another thing I can uh, suggest actually uh, as a, a myth, if you will, which is if I go into and, and get my uh, Lighthouse Tools report mm -hmm. uh, on a page and, and I see uh, it says, oh, this will cut six seconds out of the, mm -hmm. uh, the load time, and then they do that thing and the page didn't speed up by six seconds. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people realize that some of these things are threaded. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yes, I did something good, but I have four other problems that also need to be fixed. <laughs> yes. So I do see a lot of people getting an tripped up on one. that. Yeah, and Lighthouse is a, is a tricky one to begin with because people are getting confused by the, the, the idea that what they are seeing in Lighthouse is what, what users are seeing, and that's not the case because right. you are literally testing from your machine, from your browser from your internet connection and not necessarily what real, real people are uh, experiencing when they're on their mobile phones on a spotty connection out there. So I think it's important to remember Lighthouse is lab data right. and it makes predictions on what you can improve but that doesn't necessarily mean that oh now you're all doing fine. Do you also think that people are paying too much attention to the scores itself? Because I hear that yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. So like the myth is like oh we're using the Lighthouse score for ranking. That's not happening. That's not what we're doing. Right, no, exactly. In fact, uh, uh, they get too attached to that score. Mm. And sometimes it misleads them into thinking that they're doing just fine when they actually still have problems. Yeah. Uh, and another area that I see people running into is uh, it works fine from my phone, <sighs> but the user doesn't have such a nice phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you have to remember that there's different yeah. devices. Yeah. Uh, and um, there was and you could see that in Google Analytics. You can actually figure out what kind yes. of devices you're seeing yes. on your site, and then you can specifically try to understand. If, best way would be to buy one of the phones that is most prevalent on your site. Yes. And like have a look. It, oh, yeah. A very interesting yeah. idea. 
And I actually uh, shared a slide in one of my presentations uh, recently, which um, showed data actually for CNN.com mm -hmm. processing. Uh, and it was around three seconds for the high-speed phone. But by the time you get to a user with a less than $100 phone, it was, you know, 15 yeah, yeah. seconds to load. And you just really need to remember that, uh, you know, the users have all different all manner of devices. Of, yeah, yeah. And you probably want to do a good job by absolutely, the great majority of them. Absolutely. And you want to be aware that uh, a slow phone on a slow connection is like the worst situation you can probably run into in this kind of situation. And you can use things like web page test uh, to get a better feeling for how that would feel. Like you can test from different locations and different network connections. Right. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that. Yeah, that, there's so much more that you can do. And also, if you have a website that is uh, listed in Chrome User Experience Report or Crux, yes. uh, then definitely use that as well. And I think not many people are trying that out. Right. Well, it's good to get real, real world real data. Real world data, yes. real user metrics, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, in, in fact, you could broaden that piece of advice of uh, be well beyond the page speed mm -hmm. conversation, mm -hmm. by the way, because <laughs> right? uh, uh, it relates to all manner of aspects of things around mobile, for example, because yeah. we have everybody who designs for a desktop and then yeah. tries to slam that down into a mobile phone format. Yeah. Well, maybe design for the mobile, and then it's kind of easy to figure out how it's to render easier, that on the desktop. Exactly. You have more but, screen estate, so yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. But for the page speed conversation, absolutely, you just have to do that. Definitely, right. And yeah, I mean, it's it's such an important thing. And uh, people, do you remember the entire controversy when people are like, AMP is a ranking factor? Oh my, yes. <sighs> it's not. And then people are like, but... Mm, and um, page speed pays into that as well, right? AMP right. gives you a certain uh, expectation that you can have for your sites uh, in, the, in the search results. And... I've seen good, fast websites rank higher than the AMP equivalent. So, like, mm, maybe, right. maybe it is not the most important ranking factor, but it's definitely an important one. As in, like, page speed is an important ranking factor. Right. AMP not so much. AMP is just like this little batch that gives the user an expectation that they can have about it. But page speed does matter for your users, and it does matter for your conversions, as you said. Like sometimes it's configuring your CDN, getting a CDN, configuring mm. your CDN, right. making sure that caching is done right, and making sure that you architect your websites and web apps in a way that they are fast by default. Right. Yep. And if Absolutely. you can do that without AMP, then that's fantastic. AMP is a fantastic toolkit to help you do that if you don't know how. Yeah, and you could go with progressive web apps as well, you by can. the way. Yes, Which yes, are very nice definitely. because of their ability to preload content into mm -hmm. the cache on your phone. So by the time the user requests the page, it's content is there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so that's another way to skin a cat. No, I'm not supposed to say uh, that because that's, that's really a, uncomfortable that's for really cats. Uncomfortable for cats. Yeah. Yes, yeah <laughs> so take it the way I meant it. I, <laughs> I get it. I get it. So any anything else around page speed where you're like, what's happening there? Any questions you have on page speed? I, I mean, really, I guess it's reasonable to presume that there's n not any. Uh, prospect of Google dialing up that ranking notch. It's basically you're kind of set with what you've done. I mean, I know the algorithms change all the time. Algorithms change all the time. But um, but just Maybe. from the logic perspective, the issue that we talked about already between the relevance of the content mm -hmm. being well, content yeah, being yeah, king, yeah. It, yeah. it's still going to be king. You Absolutely. Know, Absolutely. Have to deliver because the right result. You want you know, the relevant content. If you have first. five right results, and you know, maybe it nudges something up. Yeah, right. like if you have if you have two results that are basically doing fine content-wise, uh, we would probably get the one that is faster, more, more right. um, prominence in the search results. Right. But yeah, and also I think it's important to understand that we are not doing it by score or lighthouse or something like that. It yeah. is it is more we are bucketing pages into like this is a programmatically slow one, this is an okay one, and this is a fast one. You see that in the speed report as well in the Search Console. Right. So um, I think people need to just like figure out if they have really slow pages, that how to make them faster. And probably if they're in the middle bit, you also want to go to the fast bit. But it doesn't matter if you have a Lighthouse score of 90 or 95. That doesn't really make right. a difference. All right, Eric, thank you so much for being here and talking all things space speed with me. That was amazing. And uh, I hope that everyone liked it and leave comments and likes uh, with us. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed it. Bye.
Hey everyone! So, next episode is gonna be with my fantastic guest Rachel Costello. And uh, Rachel, what have you brought for us? We're gonna be talking about canonicalization and URL deduplication. Sounds really cool! Don't miss it! See you then!